So I think it's worth I think it's worth that we um, that we talk a little bit about a face kickback because it's been sort of it struck me as oh that is I mean that was my aha moment for understanding phase estimation and I just wanted to know what's out there the way it's presented because the first time I read about it was really um, here while while reading the uh, programming quantum computers book and and there's some videos on YouTube there's some stuff here and 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 quantum computing stack exchange and there's some articles which I just want to quickly go through maybe like spend 10 15 minutes on it and then see what we get out of that out of that if there's anything else that kind of makes it clear or that it sort of sharpens my current intuition on this because it's a super useful concept as it says here in quantum algorithm design so it provides a framework to understand many famous quantum algorithms short circuit and phase estimation algorithm dodge algorithms ah okay how could i have done this okay because so i remember i was breaking down those algorithms without really understanding phase key back its main idea can be demonstrated with two qubits suppose we're given a one qubit unitary gate deal the term gate is interchangeable with time blah 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 and our task is to find what i don't know how the cause is what that is after 2p wraps not that I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of lost a little bit already, but know that there are two ways to think of this unitary gate. White box, black box is known, but too difficult to diagonalize. Uh, factor, I think that might be a bit. Um, it's given a unitary gate and the eigenstate is no hope to get. Recall the pure the pure phase factor in a quantum state is not measurable. Common known as symmetry. Only relative phases on different states is. Thus, given only the unitary state gate and the eigenstate, there's no hope to get that. With some extra resources, it becomes possible. Yeah. And this is exactly the aim of phase kickback. An extra qubit, a way to do Hadamard gate on the ancilla qubit, a way to do controlled unitary gate on the two qubits. In the more general case where you act on multiple qubits, more ancilla qubits may be needed. Um, explanation, control gate, yeah, but it's not like. Uh, in our two qubit example, the controlled unitary gate has an explicit matrix form. So that's controlled unitary, yeah. This is like the form of any control gate, I think. Also, the concept of control gate is not new. For example, in fact, if we keep control bit as the output, we get exactly the same two qubit control gate. Now we're ready to describe the phase kickback protocol. Start with zero, five. Apply the hardware gate to the ancilla qubit, and then the controlled unitary gate on the two qubits. One can easily verify the result state. Where I is the identity matrix, tensor product, and the, and the one qubit Hadamard gate is this. Note that the overall effect is to add a phase shift to the control and ancilla qubit. So that's what I meant, right? So that's that's exactly what I. So here, here. Note that the overall effect is to add a phase shift to the control qubit. This is opposite to the common sense that the control bit remains intact, and I think that's definitely what's confusing a lot of people. That's why it's called phase kickback. For example, the controlled unitary gate could be a controlled phase gate, and the eigenstate could be. Then we have. To further extract the phase on the ancilla qubit, there are various options. Okay, so now this is already how do you how do you extract the phase? The most straightforward one is to generate many copies of this state. And keep measuring the three physical observables. Uh, now, I think that's a bit abstract. Um, let's see what this, let's see what what the video says here. The execution of a quantum algorithm requires us to prepare states, perform quantum circuits on them, and then to read out the result. Today, we're going to introduce a commonly used technique for this final step, which uses some relative phases. These phases, which are numbers of the form e to the i phi, play a very important role in quantum mechanics, quantum information, hmm. and quantum computation. 
every unitary operator. I'll just keep a little bit see if I can get something active. interesting. If we put the output is the same state is randomly applied to some of the components of a quantum I'm state. Sure this is this. even at the physical level before we discuss any quantum. Many quantum algorithms do involve the accumulation of non-random phases, so it's convenient that there's a way to read these phases out, which will... So it's basically saying that if some algorithms rely on encoding stuff in the phases, so they, they, they can just not be ignored. Derived in this last look at the simplest of all phases. Global phase. If we have probabilities that are defined by Born's rule, don't change. So physically define an operator of the global phase. The interesting does happen when we define a controlled V alpha operation. A phase is accumulated on the one component of the state of the control qubit. Uh, so the, so the, so that's exactly, so it would saying that the phase is then go, it goes, the phase goes to the, so the, the question here is, I think it just, it just moves. It moves, it literally moves to the, to the one component of the of the control qubit. Uh -huh. This is a stark contrast to the normal way of thinking about controlled operations, in which something happens to the target qubit depending on the state of the control. This implies something called phase kickback. If we apply a controlled U operation to a register where the target subsystem is prepared in an eigenstate of U, then U acts like the V alpha operator and the corresponding phase is transferred to the control qubit, where it can then be read out in principle. So it's actually transferred. Even in the case where a single readout doesn't specify the phase exactly, this procedure can be repeated since it doesn't alter the input state psi k. This is still the case if the target register contains many qubits or other types of quantum systems. The versatility hmm. and simplicity of using a single qubit to read out the action of an arbitrarily large unitary is what makes phase kickback an important building block for quantum algorithms. So it's literally a technique that allows you to sort of get a sort of get a peek on what the operation is doing in the sense that it it, it, it takes the, the phase of I assume of the, the overall relative phase of the system that is that, that the the gate U is acting on and puts it to the one component of your control control QB. That's cool. That's definitely that's definitely a useful concept, a really useful concept. Um, why does the phase kickback mechanism work in the quantum phase estimation algorithm? I think I read that because I think this person was literally asking why is it happening when there's just control being given? That's exactly what I meant. So the answer, I remember if I remember well, is that it's yeah you can't separate like you can't separate the system, so it's not. So it appears on the first register, even though it was sort of created in the second register. But exactly, that's just a trick, like an intuition trick or misconception. Yeah. Hmm. Face kickback. Face kickback examples. Let's see if I can get some examples, maybe. Face kickback. Face estimation program primitive quantum algorithms. Journalized face kickback. Is that a paper? Do, 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 do. So maybe it's a general. Journals physics. Too fancy. I think it's too low level for what I'm trying to figure out. Um, I want an example circuit. I just want to play with a couple of things. Face kickback. That's from Quora. Maybe 
in there. So key part of the interface kickback is that this is an eigenvector of a value with an eigenvalue of goes on. Let's start with a small example. Okay. A point A, the system state is simply these. Not too bad. By point B, the Hadamard operator has converted zero into, into the plus state. Thus, point B, the whole system is in, in, in a state like that. Between points B and C, a controlled U operation is applied. Controlled meaning that it is only actually applied when the top qubit is one. There's a point C, the system is in the state this, exactly. Okay, so you're wondering how remains unchanged from the analysis above. You can see that this happens be because applying U to this results in a multiple and it gets factored out and remains unchanged. Mm. Yeah. Just a retrade. This is all predicated on being an eigenvector of you. I think that's something that's kind of weird, as in like, I was thinking more of a general, because here it's like, they're talking about eigenvectors again. It's like, if this is an eigenvector of you, which is, don't fully grasp it, but it means it doesn't change. Um, that's what it means. Okay, so they go ahead. They go ahead and explain the phase estimation example here. Hmm. I would like to see something be more practical, sort of low level to play with, because here in the book, phase kickback. See what they explain here. Once you start thinking about altering the phase, I want to think of the secrets after placing there's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the phase, the 45 degrees rotation will perform the register two condition on the lowest given it has also rotated at every value in the register one. Exactly. For which the lowest weight qubit is activated. Yeah. So that's kind of what you. That's kind of what you what you see in here. The faces here. Hmm. I mean, it's the simplest case because that's an operation that just makes a phase shift, right? Hmm. I don't know. I think it's an overall useful concept. I'm still struggling to see it applied in other in in, in other cases, but. Phase rotations to specific values in the register, but for physical work, we always need to initialize the second register in the one value. Notice that although we are applying two qubit operations between the two registers, we're not creating any entanglement. Hence, we can fully represent the state as separate registers. Two qubit gates do not always generate entanglement between registers. We'll see it in chapter 13. <laughs> CC not. So, the wide utility of phase kickback stems from the fact that it does not only work for C phase, but any conditional operation that generates a change in a register's phase. Okay? I, I even marked that when I was reading. This is a good reason, as any, to understand how we might construct more general conditional operations. And that's pretty, that's definitely pretty cool. But I can't find anything else really. Seems like phase kickback. Sort of examples. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, maybe that's it. That's all there is in, in, in this. So there's no no real need to actually dive into this farther. So it literally, it's pretty cool. It's really cool. Sorry, I just, <laughs> in my field, probably I'll stop the video already. I think it's, uh, it's pointless to, but it's so, Definitely, it's a concept to keep in mind. A phase kickback. It just definitely, it's definitely what's happening with uh, with phase estimation, and that's definitely the beauty of the beauty of this. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool.